Hi, with Resident Evil 4 Part 2 and uh, our pregame show of cat butt. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? You gonna hang out? Try hanging out? Cool. Anyway, good evening. Uh, yeah, tonight we're gonna do Part 2 Resident Evil 4. Professional mode on the GameCube. Uh, actually, on the Wii, emulating the GameCube. It's all legit. So, yeah, uh, good week <clears throat> since the last stream. Uh, I mentioned at the start of last stream, uh, doing a little bit of research and some internet sleuthing and discovering the um, uh, sort of plans for a papercraft dreamcast and decided to take on the challenge. So here we go. This is my little papercraft VMU. Unfortunately, I don't have a glue stick that uh, works quite well enough to uh, to be able to hold down some of the more uh, nuanced flaps that are cut out of this and so I've had to resort to some office tape to keeping it together but it feels quite good and uh, also my printer doesn't quite have the degree of uh, refined uh, visual quality so I kind of had to draw the uh, the buttons on there but as far as I'm concerned in the quick glance that I take as I pass my filing cabinet where it lives on top of it looks great and uh, additionally, uh, in gross disproportion, is the Dreamcast itself. Ta-da! This is the Sega Gaga Dreamcast. And uh, this as well, uh, the glue stick was a little friendlier to me on this one, so I didn't need to use quite as many uh, little individual placeholder pieces of tape. What are you poking at? Oh no! That, my kitten is my boutonniere! That's a memory that cats should not poke. Anyway. Yes, uh, <laughs> this is uh, this is the Dreamcast, uh, 124, 128 bit, and uh, yeah, so it's kind of lovely. I think that our curiosity is getting far the better of us. Give me just one second. If you were to face this way, you could totally hang out. You good with that? You good with that? Yeah? Yeah, sit down. Sit down. Let me just try to take a few things that you want to poke and put it well out of reach. Good girl. So, <clears throat> other than that, uh, let's see. Oh yeah, the Dreamcast. She's going to love playing with that. So yeah, in addition to that, uh, finished Tom Cox's Ring the Hill. Uh, lovely finish. It's... Uh, ends with a, uh, a very touching recollection of the final days of two of his cat's lives. <clears throat> uh, two cats that uh, he had to very old age and that, uh, that died apparently quite good deaths for cats as uh, anything over 15 is, uh, is working out to their advantage. And, and honestly anything over three is going to work out to her advantage. She is so bad. Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah, so that, uh, having, uh, helped a cat move on to the other side in the past, uh, couple of years, uh, I felt a strong kinship with the angst and, uh, just the difficulty of that. And there's also a nice commemorative picture here of his two cats. Uh, this one right here, he actually created a Twitter account for that fella. Uh, called My Cat is Sad, which has, of course, since been uh, decommissioned. And this is another one who walked around and kind of yelled obscenities at him. Both sound like very good cats. And uh, next up on the list, also from Tom Cox, is Help the Witch, which is, uh, these are, this is fiction, as opposed to the sort of non-fiction personal writing of the other one. And... Let's see. Oh yes, and today was a scarecrow day, so that's very good. Let's see. Let's see. Let's we have Sancho the Bailiff. It's going to be exciting. I've had that on my to-do list for a while, and that'll be good to to see. Samurai Assassin by the Anime Ego uh, brand. Uh, I haven't seen that label in a long time. Uh, they used to do a lot of, uh, of imported Jiageki movies, and I think the label is closed now. Anyway, this one is apparently out of print, so that's kind of cool. And, uh, Youth of the Beast, a, uh, 
Seijin Suzuki movie. Uh, apparently that is one of the first ones where he gets into his signature insanity. And I'm looking forward to it. Because that is what I'm here for. I watched Pistol Opera uh, this past week, and that itself was... Uh, was maybe a little bit a little bit wilder of a ride uh, than I actually expected it would be. Uh, evil, uh, this the evil is going to be. I mean, the evil is going to become increasingly more resident uh, as we move through the village to the castle, where I think evil is probably most resident. Uh, I know you can reside in a town. Uh, I don't know if you can consider yourself resident in the sense that evil is resident in the biohazard series so uh but yeah i don't know the semantics are up in the air oh no little girl yeah that's right yes say good night kiddo <laughs> <laughs> So I think that RE4 really opens up the notion of, well, you know what, Raccoon City itself had evil in its residence, and so I think RE2 probably opens up the concept and RE4 just expands it. So one second, and we can get right over there. How are you tonight swimming? that oh my god so much hair there we go It's true. Evening, Swedish X. I believe you are correct. Mm. This volume is a little low. It's kind of um, Soul Reaver low, and not that quant not not that exact sweet spot where it's gonna alert me to the uh, <laughs> to the creepy breathing presence of a uh, peasant behind me, ready to stab me with a pitchfork, uh, but also not so loud that it blows my ears out when I get scared. See how that works. Yeah, you should do that. I'm a I'm an advocate of you uh, keeping your nutrients up. Oh man, I gotta tell you, it makes you feel old when you look at the bottom of the uh, of the start screen right there, and you only see one year of a of a copyright being registered rather than 2005 2007 2009 2012 etc cetera, etc cetera, as it is successively ported Whew. well swimming that is uh, I think I don't I actually don't know what the average experience is on the pandemic so far as weight loss goes I know that I've gained well, I th I've stayed the same, but not for the best reasons, uh, because I've, I've gained a little bit of one kind of weight and lost a little bit of a kind of another. <laughs> oh yeah, Swedish X, this is, uh, this is my favorite. I also played the PS2 one for the expanded content, but uh, yeah, this one will always have my heart. Even if, objectively, I think that the Wii version is probably the best. So, okay. So, last time we went through, we did the dog stuff uh, on the other side of the lake, and Leon conked out after killing the big lake monster. And now, we are ready to meet our first proper Las Plagas. Although the dogs have kind of tipped the hand on that. Um... Actually, you know, that's really interesting. I haven't thought about this before. 
but maybe the reason why the dogs get their own special little cutscene on the other side is because that itself is your introduction to Las Plagas in a way that feels a little more confused because that's, that's the first time you're seeing the dog enemy, right? So you have no frame of reference for thinking that, like, enemy dogs are, are any different from, uh, you know... I don't know. You, that, that's, that's your one enemy. Uh, but the humans, you know, their transformation to the Las Plagas, like, pokes at the horror part of your brain because you're like, oh crap, there's something else beyond what is familiar and visible. Uh, whereas the freaky form of the dogs is the familiar firm, familiar version of them. Evening, Peacher. It's good to see you. Delago, thank you. That is the name of Old Whaley. The reason why he is angry is because people insist on calling him Old Whaley. quite like the rain uh, visual effects here. Um, the uh, little patter that you get on Leon's uh, shoulders there. It's not super, not super sophisticated, but honestly, I kind of feel that at this generation, uh, the level of visual fidelity is there to give your brain the broad strokes uh, notion that it's supposed to come away with and also be satisfying. So, uh, I don't know. GameCube and PS2 level of graphics, assuming they're up to the fidelity that those consoles are capable of, actually kind of an, are enough for me. What are the speedrunning tactics for Del Lago swimming? He seems uh, he seems very RNG. This thing, even this thing has a scream, which you, uh, you get to hear when you shoot it dead on. It's got his little tooth out. Oh, crud. That was... Not what I was hoping would happen. Jeez, that thing's got reach. Boxes on the logs uh, are not what they look like. Do you mean like uh, they're bigger or smaller? That's a that's a nice touch. Even though the Las Plagas villagers are extremely common from here on out, I really do like the design idea of you know what? Here's a new enemy. You spent the time to freak out and figure out how to beat them, so we're gonna give you a little bit of extra extra you know spending money for your trouble. Interesting. Now, when I played through on normal mode, my first time reacquainting myself with it in uh, in many years. I do not have a scoped weapon. Um, I found myself just running into those logs every time. I think what uh, what tripped me up more often than not was the sort of uh, fish tailing that happens if you uh, start moving in the wrong direction and then try to correct. As as Del Delago Delgado Delago as Delago is uh, is messing with your steering. So wait, is, is the creature's name Delago? As in, like, the creature is named the lake? Oh, hello. If I 
find myself wondering if the spinels naturally form in the locations where they're found, or if somebody just squirreled them away, uh, saving up for a, I don't know, college fund or something. Here I am, using their whole semester's worth of money to upgrade a firearm. Oh, I see. As, uh, as you might assume, I don't really know Spanish, so uh, that's new to me. Thank you. And as, as simplistic as that might seem, it's, uh, I mean, it works, right? Uh, one of my favorite kinds of words in English are things like uh, just very basic compound nouns like fireplace that we take for granted but uh, are maybe as literal of a description of the function of that specific piece of, you know, of the house as possible as uh, being the place where the fire goes. That's really interesting, Swedish X. Uh, I, uh was strongly encouraged to take Spanish for its uh, for its usefulness, which when I lived in Texas, that was absolutely a good argument for it um, on the day-to-day, -day. Uh, but I took German instead, you know, having personal connection to the language. Which, weirdly enough, given the academic spheres that I wound up going into, uh, German became useful in a day-to-day -day way. That's the thing about studying a language is that you, if you go deep enough into it, you can make it relevant. Yeah, the, the cognates in Spanish were one of the big selling points uh, I heard. All right, I'm gonna try and do this in a fun way that's not cheesing it. them. Uh. Who is left to shoot? Okay, you, you, and you. Wow! The range on that thing! Like a rubber band. Actually, not 100% I was even hitting it with those three or four shots. There we go. <laughs> yes, I can see. Uh, I can see how confusing those two would uh, would would lead somebody astray. Well, I think that's where we're picking up a language. You know, I think where you're where you're really making headway when certain words have like a lower profile in your brain when you come across them, if you just know what they are. I've obtained an object that resembles a cult group's insignia. Wonderful, Leon. Head back to the church. Ashley safety I am is discovering as I am uh, revisiting Japanese to, uh, to, to up my proficiency that uh, just a little bit of familiarity is uh, bringing back uh, that sort of, um, I don't know, quick and easy recognition? Oh, sorry, Bat. Ah, uh, come on, guys, I'm not even trying. 
love Leon's head tracking here. Hmm. One thing I have noticed about RE4 is that unlike other games, it is very, um, uh, I want to say animal neutral. Outside of that dog that shows up at the El Gigante fight, they really don't have a whole lot of affection for, you know, individual animals, their fate, etc. Uh, bats don't fight back, crows don't fight back, they're just kind of annoyed. In fact, the bats just kind of want to be your friends. Oh, man. I think I actually want to stay a little ignorant on that front. Part of what I want to achieve with this playthrough is to kind of enjoy the struggle of, uh, of figuring out the set pieces on their own terms. So uh, I do want to break the game later, though. So uh, if I can hold that in queue uh, and, uh, and thank you for it. I think Dream Bomb, uh, a, a regular in chat, um, posted something on Twitter that uh, that I would like to find at a break and, and put it into chat that uh, basically showed how this music right here, I think, shows up in a number of different games. It is apparently a song that is sampled. Um, and, uh, and that's interesting. I, I, I actually had not recognized it from other games, but apparently it makes an appearance there. <laughs> Evening, Iceman Dan. Well, thank you. I hope that, uh, well, PETA would normally be pretty pleased with my streams. I'm pretty animal friendly, but, um, uh, again, this game, you know, not really trying to kill the bats, just swinging my knife. What can you do? Uh, let's see. Okay. Yes, let's put you here. I probably want to keep those green herbs separate. Um, as much as I really do want to heal up right now, because if I find a red herb, I definitely want to combine them. I don't want those to be locked in. Oh, wait, uh, can I tune something up? What are you buying? Oh, yes, no, I, I, I should hope... Oh, I, I'm gonna... I'm gonna abstain from investing in the shotgun because I would like to use the striker. Striker, mine thrower, and red nine. That's what I want my weird... Uh, weird setup on this go-round to be. And maybe a rifle. I do feel the cat content of the stream is high quality, and I also feel that I can plausibly say that they are tolerating the attention they are given. Oh yeah, the mine thrower is a weird one. That's that's actually one of the reasons why I want to do it for the stream. As I actually have never played a full playthrough with it. I, I bought it, experimented with it, and then put it away forever. I really like how they lean into the fact that they have, like, they don't have that many enemy character models, and they just don't care. They just repeat them on screen, and uh, it still works out. <laughs> yes, this is the lion that, when brought into the Colosseum, immediately eats its keepers. And, uh... Giant is just absolutely stunned that there's somebody with flexibility. Like, oh, this guy stretches. Oh, and I would like to take what's in here before he destroys it. Oh, move, buddy! No! 
I wanted to take that. Oh, wow, I'm terrified of that. That's bad. Bad, bad, bad. Oh, there's a red herb right there. Hey, it's that dog. I love this dog, and I always wish that it became, like, my friend for a longer period of time. Thank you, dog. I'm going to use the gift of your distraction to uh, continue pillaging these buildings. And gathering the items that I can. Cool. Oh, bullets. Battlefield medicine. Whew. Yes. I really. It took me till my third playthrough to even know that there was a quick time event associated with this thing that would let you kill it faster. Crap. Uh, dog is gone. I am trapped. Uh, see if I can just run my way out of here? Hey, there's the dog. Good boy. Snap, you can have them explode inside the body? Oh, that's really cool. Oh, I see. Oh, that makes sense about the about assuming that the wolf enemies were a trap. I do feel like it is I, I feel like given the prominence of uh you know the the fad tendency to to be able to pet the dog. I think that Twitter account, Can You Pet the Dog, has uh, definitely impacted game design uh, more than many other social media um, events uh, or you know presences. But uh, yeah, not only can you not pet the dog, your only interactions with the dog get it to go further away from you. The lesson is not, can you pet the dog? The lesson is, if you love something, let it go. If it's right, it will come back to you in the form of a helper while fighting a giant. Wisdom for the ages. Oh man, there are dogs here. And usually I kill them with the sniper rifle, which I don't have. So... I need to figure something out about that. Is the dog named Huey? I mean, it... it I mean, it makes sense as an overlap or a, a callback to, um... You know... Haunting Ground slash Demento. 
but uh, I am unaware of that being the good dog's actual name. Excuse me, if so. If I can... Oh no. I was trying to use my god hand knowledge and uh, pick them off one by one by calling them out. But, apparently con uh, poking one pokes them all. Okay, cool. Oh god! Are you gotta be kidding me! I had way more health than even when Gigante grabbed me. Nonsense. I call shenanigans. Well, I mean, it's got a very Huey look to it. The only thing that looks similar to the wolves that actually attack you. Uh, is I, I think that I think the mouth has some similar proportions. Can I? Oh, that's. There we go. unusual angle. Huh, interesting. <clears throat> and uh, evening space Hamlet. Yes. Looks like that was far enough away to actually call out, uh, to call one out from the pack. Let's go and get a shotgun ready. dogs in the maze. Uh, that uh, consistently even when I was very familiar with the game and had my own roots in my head the dogs in the maze were the one part that I would get pretty consistently freaked out uh, over. Because I would want to get in and out of there as quickly as possible and hearing them panting behind me uh, I don't know what the sound design is like there but it always made it feel like it's right behind you. And uh, just this time through, I'm appreciating how the candle on the right kind of splits that bottom circle right in the middle so that the flame is uh, kind of at the bottom tip of the Los Illuminados insignia. Actually, the, the, the shape language of the Los Illuminados insignia, I noticed that it persists across the, the, the whole game uh, and, and shows up in places that I would not expect it to, but it makes sense to kind of give it sort of a visual unity. When I see it elsewhere, I'll call it out. Um, oh yeah, the TMP is a lot of fun. It took me a while to warm up to it, but uh, once I did, I came to appreciate its value immensely. That is the classic end of the dead end hallway flash grenade. Every church has one. The 
this puzzle surprised me my first time through because it was the first time I was asked to really think about anything that was not uh, combat strategic. It actually gets the closest to being sort of Resident Evil-y without uh, being too intensely uh, demanding. Yeah, that seems right. Strice, man, Dan. Nobody wants to carry the collection plate in Los, in Los Illuminados. RPD I'm under the costume sort of puts you. Ashley in her what? kind of Britney Spears uh, That's outfit. Right. And I have to get you out of here. Now come with me. It's Leon. I've succeeded in extricating my subject. Good work, Leon. I'll send a chopper over right away. Where's the extraction point? There's another trail that you can take to get out of the village. The chopper will pick you up beyond there. Got it. I'm on my way. Oh, man. I kind of want to... I, I have nothing that I would do with this, but I kind of want to rip that image, that, that background, um, just whatever template they're using there for these uh, playing manual images. Uh, Space Hamlet I actually didn't hear. Mark indicates that Ashley is being carried away. So let's say there. Oh my God. So I've never paid attention to this before, but doing so now I'm looking at how the uh, just the the tutorial image there is organized the uh, attache case and the fact that everything is very top heavy uh, I mean it makes sense because if you are holding it by the handle then everything is going to slide toward the bottom if you're running around carrying it like Garcian and killer seven uh, so everything absolutely would be pushed in that direction that said that layout drives me kind of nuts and uh, I applaud them for showing me somebody else's way of doing it. Yeah, Ashley's outfit in this is funny because even though Leon's outfit is, you know, it's anachronistic, it's clearly not, uh, like, context appropriate, uh, nonetheless it manages to sort of fit into the environment in a way that you can just kind of accept it, whereas Ashley's sort of like pop star, um, I don't know, mid-aughts pop star look uh, definitely feels out of place. Uh, yeah, that feels pretty good. You know, that would be I'll take the kind of an interesting image account. Uh, RE4 attache know. case, My where people Austin submit Saddle. what their attache the cases look like. Fine. And you can see what organization Saddle. looks like for different people. What do you want? To demonstrate to the whole world our astounding power, of course. No longer will the United States think they can police the world forever. 
So we kidnapped the president's daughter. A super post 9-11 story. Send her back. No. Leon, I think they shot something in my neck. What did you do to her? We just planted her a little <coughs> gift. Oh, there's going to be one hell of a party when she returns home to her loving father. <laughs> but before that, I thought I might bargain with the president for some donation. Believe it or not, it takes quite a lot of money to keep this church up and running. Faith in money will lead you nowhere, Sadler. Oh, I believe I forgot to tell you that we gave you the same... That's right, Ice Man Dan. ...when I was unconscious. Oh, I truly hope you like our small... I think I actually throw it in at a, at a couple of key points when the uh, hatch, you will in the narrative, coming mainly from Sadler and also from Salazar. Um, as I say, I'll have total control over your minds. I mean, they don't really do anything particularly deep with it, but just uh, the fact that it is mentions, uh, and the fact that this is like when the sort of uh, the permanence of the war on terror is just sort of like starting to sink in uh, to a lot of people, both in America and internationally. Um, you okay? It makes this. It makes it really makes this a piece of its time. We got into this mess. We can get out of it. Such that I actually wonder how that line and that sentiment lands with somebody who was born and came of age post 9/11. Really, is it anything like the uh, sort of like Wait. tentacle under the frock? Uh, thing that, uh, like, form that he has when he kills Luis. Okay, good. Nope. Let's go back. <clears throat> Alright. Follow me. So there is still money to get inside this church, so I'm going to very quietly not disturb the mob down that road and walk back in. I really love that they that they made this possible and didn't just lock the door and say, I better not go back that way, there might be enemies, uh, and let you actually go in and discover, yes, there are still enemies. Suplex, and I want to see that head crack like so many Easter Sunday eggs. Yes! Yeah! Happy Easter. And there's my 5,000 pesetas, which I. That's actually. That's interesting. Uh, that is the same amount as the special award that I got for uh, killing my first Las Plagas. Uh, this one doesn't have a special little icon, though. It's just regular chump chains. That apparently is what the acolytes carry on them. That's easy enough. Yeah, I know. It's neat, like, he just had them... Stand guard. Wait. 
There we go. I've never seen that happen. I'm even trying to figure out exactly how that even happened, because typically when you kick them, they fly off in a direction... Uh, I don't think they take damage from impact. Um, unless he happened to be holding his torch. I know that if you hit them when they are about to attack you with their torch, they will catch fire and burn. But, uh, yeah, that's super weird. I've never seen that before. Oh, uh, just somebody crude. I think you can... Oh, man. I remember there is... I think there's a scenario where you can get attacked by enemies in here? I'm trying to remember. Oh, I see. Gotcha, sweet attacks. Yeah, I have a... Oh, man. I have a video somewhere on my hard drive because I've, I only saw this in this location. Somehow Ashley died here. Um, I don't remember if it was an accident or if we were attacked by enemies, but she fell down in the puddle when she died and there were actual like bubbles in the water. Uh, it was the weirdest thing and I, for all of the Ashley deaths I've ever encountered, that was the only time that specific effect ever happened. Welcome. Oh yeah, that's right. You would have been around. There we go. Ah, a choice of an avid gun collector. It's a nice gun oh, I love these custom quotes. I want to hear that again. Ah, a choice of an avid gun collector. It's a nice gun stranger. Oh, uh, let me sell the other one first. Yeah, it's also, I think it was in the same... What are you Actually, the same playthrough where Leon's hands, for some reason, uh, were about like a foot away from his wrists, and so the, the 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 polygons for the wrists were just like stretched out. So he was like swinging his knife, and it was stabbing like several feet away as he was attacking. Very strange. Ah, I'll buy it at a high price. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, hand cannon quote is great. So is uh, broken butterfly is probably my favorite out of all of them. Uh, no, I would like to save that. Is that all, stranger? It disappoints me that uh, even though I'm selling this for the same amount that I would sell an individual thing, he does not comment. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, I'll buy it at a high price. <laughs> Guess Thank he only you. does that for things that. Uh... What are you buying? Ah, a choice of an avid gun collector. It's a nice gun stranger. But there's a free one in the castle? Oh wow, this also takes up more room in your tache case. <laughs> Thank you. What are you buying? The Red Nine is very similar to Eva's gun in um, in Metal Gear Solid Three. Is that all, stranger? <laughs> Thank you. Is that all? <laughs> is that all? <laughs> is that all? <laughs> Thank I do you. not remember that. Now the broken butterfly one is like, um, oh, see so you got an eye for things. Gun's not just about shooting, it's about reloading. You'll know what I'm talking about. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's fantastic because it's a, it's a breech loader, right? Because you snap it down and you, you know, drop the cartridges out and you put the new ones in. And uh, yeah, that's a good one. Oh, I think I remember that one. 
Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's sounding more familiar now. Come back any time. Oh, uh... Follow me. Yeah, I'll see if I can find that, uh, that Ashley... Oh, that's a great sound effect. Wait. Uh, that Ashley video. Follow me. It looked like, it looked like something they did to the death animation that, uh... That was very custom to a specific environment. say one of the maybe incidental gameplay advantages of, uh, of Ashley being in tow is you get the camera pulled back so you actually get to see more of your environment. Uh, it is one of the few instances where having your escort, you know, active, you know, on your heels, however you want it, um, is like, uh, actually gives you a gameplay advantage that you otherwise would not have. Because, clearly, in an action horror game, being able to see more gives you more options. And we are going to put you... ...in a safe place. Stagger if I kick it into him. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, I think that uh, I typically dislike escort missions. Me. Uh, this, uh, I mean, this game uses, I mean, the escort mission is, is so much of it, uh, it manages to to make it feel pretty smooth and painless for a lot of the things that, uh, that I dislike. I think, I mean, just kind of spitballing through it, I think maybe the reason why it succeeds is what you're doing isn't that different. Um, you're still running around, you're still shooting, you're still watching your back. Uh, watching your back is something that you have been very acutely aware of uh, because the AI focuses on surrounding you. And so now you've just got a little more, you know, extra space behind you that you are trying to watch. right. Uh, Leon's voice has a presence and uh, they respond to that. What? Oh. Well, shoot. Whoa! I mean, I thought Leon had upper back, like, upper back strength, but, uh, 
just hauled Ashley and then jumped off a roof. Follow me. Yes, Ashley's AI is intuitive, and, I mean, the ways that she responds to, you know, threats is, is pretty good. I mean, the fact that duck and cover overrides anything else that she is doing when you're aiming uh, in her direction uh, just makes it immediately much better. Whoop. Huh. Well, sorry, Ashley. <laughs> oh, you're still here. I'm surprised I have not seen more or less Plagas. They must have a hive mind, uh, because I really appreciate the optimism of just littering your main thoroughfare, one of them, with bear traps, uh, with the intention of catching one person who might come through there, uh, while everybody else is just sprinting along the pathway. Yeah, uh, I find uh, one of the reasons why Evil Within uh, feels like Resident Evil 4 2 is uh, it includes bear traps and also makes them interactable with the enemies so you can actually use them strategically. Talk to him by his grandfather who used to hunt in this region long ago. ever find out how Sarah removed the egg before it hatched. Um, so I get the impression that Leon's and, uh, I mean, Leon's and Ashley's sort of parasites are already, you know, up and going, which is why their um, sort of cure procedure is so excruciating. This, uh, this atmospheric music in particular fairly distressing. It has a, uh, a, a pretty good slow burn weathering effect. There we go. Imagine that spending many years fighting zombies would give you, uh, for your, you know, profession, uh, unusual comfort at shooting human targets on the ground.
Yeah, a lot of little things, uh, th that's one of the things I like about how they retread these areas. Um, the, uh, they add little, little things into the nooks and crannies that you are going to bypass because you think to yourself, oh, I know it's there, but, uh, then exploring gives you different rewards. Wait. There you go, Swimmy. There's the example of an enemy responding to Leon's voice. you want. <laughs> I'm killing him. Yeah, it does make you feel clever when you do it uh, intentionally. Follow me. Wait. up on the second level. <laughs> Anybody out here or just up there? out there has got to know I'm here. Wait. Anybody over there? I have no idea where they are, and I'm actually a little bit freaked. <laughs> you guys out here? Oh, you're bugged. That's why. I was like, surely they have to be on the second floor. Uh, and they were. I was expecting them, like, I thought that they would be, like, right here, idling. Which is why I kept trying to go up to the window and, uh, and look. But, uh, but no, they were just continually walking in this direction. I'm doing an ammo. Oh, I'm actually doing pretty dang good. firing sound effect is. Much more dramatic than the uh, 
sort of like zipper-like sound effects that uh, come with the uh, uh, what was it? What was the handgun that he gives me? Wait. For shooting the medallions, Matilda. Yeah, seeing little bugs like that, uh, I think they're kind of a, a double treat in a way, because a game like this is, I mean, console games like these are so finely polished. Um, I think of Capcom offerings in the, the same vein that I think of, um, you know, the Metal Gear titles, where uh, they are so heavily QA'd and, and tested and stuff like that, that um, they just like finding a bug or something that is really highly unintended behavior. Uh, it feels like you've, you've got them, you know? <laughs> yeah, Iceman Dad. Uh, the, uh, sort of automatic muscle movements after the head has been removed, uh, feel suitably good and creepy. Welcome. What are you buying? Okay, don't need a treasure map. Oh, well. Wow. Looks like the Matilda is not for sale again. It's kind of a surprise. What are you buying? Hmm. Might do it on health. Come. Not bad. I feel like I'm pretty good going into this set piece. Back at any time. Leon, I have some bad news. I'd rather not hear it. Well, I'm afraid I have to tell you anyway. We've lost contact with the chopper. Someone must have shot it down, though we can't determine who. Great. We're prepping another chopper for you. Meanwhile, I want you to head towards the extraction point. Got it. You know, I don't know. Uh, what his involvement was with Remake. What are we gonna do, Leon? Hate to say it, but we're sandwiched, all right. Quick, in that cabin! <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're right. Leon. You know, Swimmy, uh, the thought that I had was uh, Small world, eh? losing contact with the chopper uh, and then concluding that it was shot down is like, uh, that's such a big jump. And then I thought, you know, well, maybe Huntington, there was like a process there where they evaded that. But you're actually right. That is actually the bigger problem. Oh, excuse me, Your Highness. Perhaps the young lady might want to introduce herself first before asking someone his name. Her name's Ashley Graham, the president's daughter. Is she... Well, you know. Don't worry. She's cool. Eh, never mind. There's supposed to be some kind of obvious symptom before you turn into one of them anyway. <gasps> Look! Not entirely clear what she's cool is supposed to mean. Ashley, upstairs. Uh, Unless Luis was genuinely concerned that Ashley was in some way, like, kind of like partnering with Sadler or something. Opportunity to collect whatever I can. I also like how Luis has a red nine. The uh, weapons dealer did pretty good on that sale this trip. Up. 
And yeah, yeah, Luis is, uh, I think that's kind of the, uh, persona that is, shows up for him in, like, the Ada scene is that he's, you're kind of, uh, I'm a ladies' man slash womanizer kind of thing. Which Ada is not buying for a second. I think he's also got a line later to that, uh, to that effect. Yes, Wimmy, I'm super interested to know what you find out. Wow, there's another one down there. Okay. Uh... Good opportunity to reload. Evening round delay. Good to see you. It's been a while. chunk out of you. Things with me are great, Randley. Uh, all, uh, all quarantining considered. <laughs> I've been fortunate enough not to get sick, so I uh, count my blessings there. sound of so many of them falling.
pretty sure this is time-based and not damage-based, so... I don't think I'm prolonging the inevitable. Oh, wow. That's, uh, Lost Plagas hatching right behind me! Oh, crap. Uh... Okay. Looks like they're backing off. So, what do we do now? The bridge I crossed to get here is out, so I guess we have no choice but to keep moving. I forgot something. You guys go on. Huh. Here. Lewis. That's interesting, Swimming. Uh, did is this uh one of these uh, games like like God Hand where the uh, the actual dub internationally is English and they just subtitle it or um, or, or is there an actual Japanese dub for that region's version oh wow I didn't know there was uh, uh, I didn't know there was like a fixed amount I actually thought that in my head it was either uh, time based or they shared a damage pool that um that uh, that determined when that encounter ends. I think I came up with a damage pool interpretation because, uh, as happened there, I have seen that encounter end uh, mid, like like right after firing a bullet. Okay, one thing I do remember is even though it teleports you to a specific spot for the cutscene, uh, follow me. All of your rewards are still hanging around. There is, uh, one very funny discrepancy, uh, in or difference in the uh, Japanese subtitles and the English dub of God Hand. There's uh, there's that enemy who's uh, kind of an 80s rocker looking guy, and you first encounter him on a boat, and uh, you fight him along with a couple of you know just regular grunts, and uh, when you defeat him. He does, you know, one of those, has got like a silly catchphrase that he says and then jumps off the boat in a ridiculous way. In English, he says, long live the guitar. Uh, but it, with a Japanese subtitle, uh, it's, you know, the Japanese subs are in, you know, kanji and, and the kana. Uh, this one is actually all English, all capital oh, letters. It says, I love guitar as the uh, translation of long live the guitar. What are you And uh, it's one of the only instances I can think of where that happens, and it's uh, it's kind of a fun discovery. Is that old? Stock, yes, sir. Hmm. No, <laughs> that would be very painful if that were the way it were arranged. Yeah. Yeah, that feels okay. <laughs> Thank you. Come back at any time. Oh, yeah, I can sell some of this TMP ammo that I'm never going to use. What are you selling? Is that all straight? <laughs> Thank you. And yeah, I think the yellow is coming up. I'm also kind of remembering you can get a lot of money if you do both paths, uh, though it is a pretty resource-intensive choice.
Let's go with... Alright, let's go with the Gigante first. And... I don't remember if I saved. I think I did. Just in case. I did not. Follow me. Do uh, any of the Resident Evils have Japanese dubs, or are they English with Japanese subs as well? Uh, what's the smart thing to do here? Yes. Uh, smart thing is to have a scoped weapon, which I don't, but I'll try this. idea. Alright, let's own it. Oh no! Did I get them? Oh wow, I can actually get a lot closer than I thought I could. So, yeah, that makes more sense than trying to snipe with a handgun. go super great. <laughs> Let's try it again. Oh no, oh no, 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 no! Well, that was a mistake. Oh, no. That wasn't an intentional reset, that was actually just bad decision making. just in case anybody thought I was being expedient on trying to reset that. Wait. Okay. It's closer can I get? Follow me. There we go. That's interesting. I wonder if that's a style, like a Mikami style thing. You know what? That probably did a lot of damage to him. That I need to use this. Wow, he is right there. Oh, I'm not using my stock. Okay. That'll be smarter. That's weird. Leon's death sounds are coming out of my right headphone. typically like saving everything that's in between these uh, kind of partitions uh, because there's a lot of resources in there. They get destroyed by the Gigante when he goes through, but I might not be able to do that this time through.
Oh god, he's right there. To, yes, I do. Oh, cool. I did not know that it became an obstacle for him if it missed. I thought it just shattered. That's kind of cool. Like leaving Ashley at death's door, but I kind of think I need to save that for Leon. take on the villagers in the other path with this, uh, with these resources left. And finish the game with the old key in my back pocket. Wait. Yeah. Yeah, the treasures are, are what I have in mind here. Um, there's one. I think there's something high up here. Maybe in a bucket or something. Maybe it's in this section. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, the sound effects in this game overall are very crunchy, and uh, even right down to a lot of the, um, like, physical struggle grappling sound effects, which I, they almost sound like, uh, like twigs snapping fully, right? Uh, for like the bones breaking, the sinews tearing, like taking a piece of bamboo that's not totally dry and swiveling it around, this sort of thing. What are you buying? So that, oh no, that's the same. What are you buying? And that is the same also. Come back any time. I'm noticing they do something in this, uh, in RE4, that they do in... I think RE7, but definitely in RE2 and RE3 Remake where um, if you're looking at an interactable object um, and you manipulate it, they don't go through the trouble of animating Leon putting his hand on it and pulling the lever or doing anything like that. They just animate the lever going up and down and they allow you to sort of abstract what what is happening. Or, they, you know, they let you visualize it. Oh.
Oh god. Woo! <laughs> Give Leon a shave. do that um, anyway yeah they do that in the uh, the later RE games and that has always struck me as a very production friendly way of doing that especially since you have many many interactions and that saves you the trouble of that saves you the trouble of having to animate all of them having these things stacked in such a way that makes sense for their shape as attachments, but this is interfering with my physical habits, or my, you know, manual way of doing things. I'm gonna save that cart for when I have Chainsaw Sisters after me. Yes, the secret under the barricade is is a favorite as well. Dustin, it's good to see you. I'm glad you're able to make it out for part of it. Uh, let's see what that was about. Yeah, we're only about an hour and 45 in. Is that? Oh, yes, there's a dude up there. Uh, I figure I'm going to go on this for probably about I don't know, another hour and a half, and then I have something that will uh, be of interest to exactly three people for a stinger, and one of those people is me. <laughs> It's an old comedy, comedy, comedy 64, Commodore 64 edutainment game that uh, I have reacquired that takes advantage of early voice synth tech, uh, uh, technology that's kind of neat. somebody behind me. Oh god! I thought she was dead. She wasn't. Dude's got like a knee of steel.
I know there there are certain enemies that will always uh, kind of pop their heads and uh, have a Las Plagas there, uh, regardless of where you shoot them enough times. Uh, so you do get kind of goofy things like, you know, I just plugged him in the thigh six times and uh, his head exploded for no apparent reason. But, uh, and I'm never sure how I feel about that. Uh, Swimmy, I agree completely. I actually have a, um, I have a little folder on my phone's music. I actually have two playlists. One is, um, uh, oh, shoot, what's his name? One of the best composers on the SID chip. I'm actually going to look this up because this is going to bug me. Rob Hubbard, thank you. Yeah, I've got a playlist of almost all of Rob Hubbard's stuff, plus uh, a general playlist of uh, things like Ben Daglesh's Last Ninja soundtrack, uh, Turrican, um, Matt Gray's uh, Last Ninja 2 soundtrack, a uh, lot of uh, a lot of those folks. All right. So now I'm going to trigger this fight, and then I'm going to run away, and then I'm going to use the explosive cart to try to kill, if not both, at least one of these two. Like, Dr. Salazar... Dr. Salvador is one thing, but uh, these two are quite another. Jesus. Ashley, what must she be thinking in there? Cool. Very glad I have this shotgun for, at the very least, crowd control. Oh. Okay. I'm surprised it has any stopping power against her. I also really don't think I could have done that if I hadn't saved the cart. Or at least been able to do that and have any resources left over for the, left over for the remainder of this challenge. Yeah. Yeah, I I think that's where I'm on the fence. Uh, I think it is actually very interesting uh, survival horror slash shooter uh, dynamic to make shooting in the head demonstrably riskier. 
So having them be the direct result of that is actually very interesting to me because that makes headshots high risk, high reward. Yeah, yeah, now that makes sense to me. Excuse me. I wonder if, uh, oh right, Ashley. I wonder if having the Plagas, like, definitely show up uh, in certain enemies, regardless of how they're attacked, was easier to sort of implement than trying to figure out what the right balance is between uh, randomized uh, plagas depending upon, you know, headshots versus um, making sure a plagas always showed up so that you couldn't just exploit the system by not shooting them in the head. As far as, like, as far as the final experience goes, I mean, I don't have the other version, so I can't say for sure, but uh, it seems to me the difference in quality of experience is negligible, so it's fine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's uh, a matter of setting how many appear and when, rather than trying to do a lot of uh, acrobatics with probability, depending upon a player's action. As a matter of fact, having it rely more on what the player chooses to do actually makes it harder to, uh, would make it harder to guarantee a particular kind of uh, suspension, or suspense. Excuse me. Uh, yes, absolutely. I will be streaming RE4, RE8. Um, but uh, I will do that after... Uh, hold on a second, there's the dumpster over there. Uh, I will do that after I have my first playthrough with it. Because that is sacrosanct. First playthrough of a survival horror game was between a man and his god. sense to me. What, is there somebody behind me? Oh god. Uh... Yeah. I was really hoping that wouldn't happen.
I have in the chamber here. This can give me space that I can then use to reload my shotgun. Juggling weapons to make best use of that half a second that a stun from one weapon will give you to reload the next. That's a very different kind of survival horror experience. Oh, no, 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 don't despawn! No Squimmy, you never told me about that, and that sounds like a fantastic story that I would love to hear. Already deathly curious about how, uh, about what point this game illustrated. Uh, yeah, Iceman Dash, I hope so. Ashley? No, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think I have any frame of reference for anybody that Ivanka, like, reminds me of. Anybody up there? God, those towers, those watchtowers are so tall. I keep finding myself wanting to treat them like they're a, a mercenaries design. Uh, where you can just like climb the top of them, find something that you can use strategically for about 10 seconds and then run away. Huh. I see. So, uh, so in form, if not in content. Gotcha. Well, I have no doubt. I mean, you, uh... Follow me. As I recall, you express yourself quite well in probabilities and numbers. And yes, taxes are complicated, I think. Uh, that, that's one of the reasons why. I'll happily use a program or a professional to do them. Okay, and that brought us out pretty well. Many of our, with with most of our limbs intact and our pockets flush, wait, with riches, like a chipmunk's cheeks, full of the acorns of lucre. Yeah. Yeah, I think the uh, the whole like amusing rogue Nathan Drake, uh, I'll figure it out when I get there, uh, notion is a lot of fun and does have a place in a particular kind of swashbuckling sense, uh, but absolutely has no place in anything that involves uh, something where life or death depends not on the split second choice you make as the boulder is coming down the... Uh, the path towards you, but uh, life or death depends on how well your plans today can bear fruit in like six months. 
not the place for uh follow me not the place for Johnny Knoxville welcome <laughs> what are you saying? I mean it actually is it actually is very interesting to me because those in? those are the traits of charismatic heroes in a lot of medias that I, a lot of media that I like and a lot of the stories that I like uh, and it just it calls to mind exactly how much the charm of those what characteristics are, are is almost entirely dependent upon the context that I'm experiencing it in like that is uh, you know which isn't saying anything bad about that personality type I'm improvisational and spontaneous and follow me and not uh, not a long-range strategic thinker which is one of the reasons why I would never run for president of the United States uh, different people in their capacities are best suited in different areas so uh, think about what someone's good at wait and uh, don't ask them to do something different if it's super consequential I always want this thing to be so much more interactable than it is, which is not at all. Follow me. And thank you. Oh right. Uh, Wait. It's actually an instance where having Wait. Ashley. Uh, even though she has no choice, having Ashley. Uh, chill out behind you is actually helpful because it kind of lets you tighten the camera over your shoulder. Oh, uh. Ugh. Yep. <laughs> oh, wow. Bounce both of those right off his forehead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, this is an area where like having a uh, having a scope, uh, scoped weapon in my uh, inventory would be super useful. And I don't have one. <laughs> Yeah, they have your standard infinite axe that your uh, average field worker is equipped with. Follow me. <laughs> yes, they are basically they're basically rural horror enemy uh, uh, hammer brothers. Oh wait, yeah, wait. you were there. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think there is absolutely value in charisma in somebody who Follow me. Uh, is going to be a politician and is going to, and you know, the success of their job is going to depend upon coalition building and uh, and the like. Um, but for the most part, somebody creating policy in areas that I have. I'm not even talking expertise, but the bare familiarity with the subject matter to be able to make an informed call as to what is good work and what isn't. Uh, I don't need them to be relatable. Uh, I need them to show up on time. <laughs> That's all I need. <laughs> are definitely messing with these guys' inner ears. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> well, they can survive 12 headshots. Uh, they're largely immortal, and they apparently can survive on malice and leers alone, but, uh, yeah, they, uh... 
They got the balance of a two-legged table. It's kind of in that sweet spot where uh, if it were any closer to you, it would definitely give you blowback. Oh, pretty sure this guy's head it goes boom. Um, uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, so yeah, if you're quick on the draw, then you can get away with a free two for one. Right, this is where Ada wakes up after getting conked out in the uh, in the village. But I think that's only in the it's only in the PS2 Ada missions. Oh, hey, Nifty! I've got two full sets. Super low on healing items for the boss I'm about to fight. Oh yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. It's like, what, we put it in the treasure chest. <laughs> That's all we needed to do. Follow me. Like as soon as you perform your one action to earn access to it, their obligations as designers are Wait. done. play Vanquish. What are you buying? I was very surprised to find uh, back time. that Mikami had worked on that one. Well, not surprised in the sense of like, I can't believe Mikami worked on that one, but surprised in the sense of I didn't know about it and I've had it sitting on my shelf for quite a while. I just, I really admire this game for being so tightly constructed, right. for having such a strong sense of what the mechanics that are meaningful are, and having refined them. Uh, actually, this is not equipped. I want this equipped. Um, no. There we go. Yet also... Uh, and and also making the gameplay varied enough around those central focused ideas uh, and also managing to be playful without inventing like a ton of new systems to to make being playful make sense it's got a lot of admiration for that outside. Ashley go hide yeah Cool. That's 
uh, yeah, here's, uh, I think, no, oh, never mind. Did I do it? Okay, cool, I did it. Oh, cool, he still has the bullet holes in his jacket from when Ada shot at him. I assume they're from when Ada shot at him, unless he's just been shot at in that jacket enough times. Go up the ladder. Trying to save my big weapons like uh, grenades and stuff for the second form, because that he's much more agile and that gives me a lot more trouble. legs keep what I'm down here now uh shoot that's not what I want to do Let's see if I can knock him down with this oh maybe I want to climb up here Yeah, I want to get him near that exploding barrel. Oh, he's not near the exploding barrel. Let's try that again. I hate to waste these things, though. Uh, okay. impact. Let's try 
that again. Oh god, he's right there. in the green, I think. Jeez. <laughs> yes, conservation of matter can go screw itself. I remember reading somewhere, somebody pointing out that uh, if the amount of heat necessary to like metabolize at a rate that's necessary for uh, for that kind of, you know, physical growth, uh, basically the amount of heat that was that is generated by something like the tyrant's hand immediately growing claws would be so much that it should probably just melt the damn tyrant. You better stop. Oh man. So wait, the incendiaries are powerful against them? That seems kind of counterintuitive given the environment. I think I remember you mentioning this to me before. Evening, Viper. It's good to see you. Let's get this here. Okay, cool. And before I jump back into that, uh, Viper, I want to show you this. So, I think you saw this on the Twitter. Hey, this fella right here. My, uh... My Papercraft Dreamcast. Actually, not just my Papercraft Dreamcast, my Papercraft Sega Gaga Dreamcast. This thing is actually called out as such. And uh, so it's kind of neat. It's got the sort of Saturn design. And I also made this. A little Sega Gaga VMU. Which is um, actually... Here, I just got to do a comparison. Just kind of what they look like side by side. I tried to uh, print it out such that it was uh, it would be roughly uh, VMU size. So let's kind of lay one on top of the other here. I kind of got it. Oh man. Yeah, I didn't even know that that existed. Um, I was actually looking for the uh, the regular Dreamcast Papercraft because that would uh, that would actually be a little friendlier on uh, on the project itself because because I mean it takes a lot of ink to print a you know a black slash gray Dreamcast and also when you use a uh, um, uh, when you use a Exacto knife. To, uh, to score the lines that you're going to need to fold down. Uh, unless the paper itself is the same color as the printout, 
you get the kind of like white lines on the edge because that's what the paper looks like on the inside. So uh, I was hoping to find uh, one of the regular, you know, just like white chassis Dreamcast uh, paper craft things so that it could fit that. Um, but no luck so far, at least nothing that's at a resolution that could print well. Well, there is one incendiary inside this boss fight area, so I can use that. Um, I think I remember you telling me that because of the 60 FPS on the PC version, speedrunners are able to use the incendiaries to, like, just get him to burn up instantly. Yeah, I guess, like, the reason why that seemed counterintuitive to me is because he is in an area of flame. So in my brain, he is, like, basically like a fire elemental and would just be immune to it, but I guess that's not the case. Yeah, please do. And, uh, Swimmy, do you mean, like, paper craft like this kind of thing, or origami, or, or both? Now that I know, I can sort of get him to do his sort of, like, reach and stab attack, and then catch him off guard. I am absolutely gonna do that. No! Dude, take it! Okay, I have to say, surely that didn't kill me. I didn't intend to do that, but sure. Oh man, a Metal Gear Rex paper craft would be great. Uh, okay. I don't like using flash grenades frivolously, but I think that's kind of what this is going to call for. Nope, let's equip it. Oh, what? One thing that I do think the game could benefit from is that that's um, that games after it really pioneered is uh, trajectory arcs for grenades that you're gonna throw. Because I have a very hard time gauging distance based on. Uh, Leon's body language behind this.
I'm hoping I can keep this back and forth up long enough to, uh, to actually kill him good and proper. Good. Running by that guy is going to be so gross. Big cheese indeed. I do like finding strategies for his two different forms, one uh, using a back and forth on the ground, and the other one using a back and forth um, up top. Jesus! One of the things that I really do dig about a, a harder level survival, uh, a survival horror, excuse me, let me say that again, a higher difficulty on an action survival horror game uh, is getting to a boss fight and figuring out as you go along and then just expending almost all of your available resources trying to get it through. Um, yeah. It's a good feeling. It makes you feel. It makes it feel very earned, like a good hard fight. Viper, thank you. Are you okay, Leon? Is there anything over here? There is not. I find myself wondering if Mendez like. If he looks like that all the time underneath his coat, and uh, just, you know, that's the reason for the coat. Or if he looks human on the day-to-day, -day, and that was just an instance where uh, even the slightest physical trauma uh, triggers his, uh, his monster form. Welcome. What are you buying, sir? <laughs> There's nothing new here. What are you buying? Am I going to stoop to buy a first aid spray? I am not. Come back any time. As far as, like, uh, cinematic storytelling goes, giving you, a, uh, giving you a view of the castle and the drawbridge right from here really is such a smart thing to do. Because as soon as you see this, I think this, is, I think this is the first time you actually get to see the castle. Um, so yeah, as soon as you, you see it, the first thing you're thinking is like, well, when do I get to go there? And so they give that to you visually and then give you the opportunity to go to it immediately. So that's cool. I agree. Also, I think it's very interesting, and I'm actually curious, uh, Swimmy, what your thoughts are on it, um, that when you... Uh, return on the, the little uh, minecart thing here, a ski lift, 
uh, you have no more enemy encounter. It just whoop, takes you up there. I'm wondering if maybe they thought, like, well, uh, you just finished a boss fight, so we're going to let you cool down for a little bit, or if uh, it's more of a... Uh, I don't know. Uh, it doesn't make sense to do this set piece a second time kind of thing. Yeah. Alright, I'm going to have that old key in my pocket till I die. Or escape. Escape is an option. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah, Iceman Dan, they do have the moments where you uh, press the um, press the triangle button. I think it is, and it sort of zooms in on uh, the bridge or your destination. I'm trying to think if I, I remember. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 3, one of its big design changes was it was just straightforward. It wasn't, you know, backtracking or anything. It was just go straight ahead. And I, I don't think they did that in that game. I, outside of Grozny Grad, I think, where you had sort of like a cliffside overlook view, um, for the most part, you're, uh, you're just focusing on your immediate environment. I really don't have a lot here. I'm wondering if I should buy a new gun. Well, let's see. Wait. A convenient truck-sized hole here. sound effect. The impact sound effect is so good. I just find the guy who's holding it with both hands very funny. You take that one. Okay. Ready? Yes, Wimmy, that's a really good point. Uh, the calm before the storm and then having like a lot of villagers, probably more than you've really encountered at once coming through. I think they spawn infinitely uh, to make this cutscene make sense. Um, but I'm not sure. Come on. Yeah. Oh, that's really interesting. Huh. So is the purpose to like leave her in a safe location or is it to get the enemies off your back because once they have Ashley they become less aggressive towards you and without Wait. Ashley uh, they're like you, you, you take the heat off yourself. Oh I see. Gotcha gotcha. Does Ashley turn around to face me? No, she just continues staring in that direction. I think there's a snake in here? Ah, uh, yes there is!
like getting all these little rewards right at the start of the chapter. It's that extra feeling of, uh, of accomplishment there. Oh, wild. Welcome. Excuse me. Cash AK, yes. Is that old? <laughs> Thank you. Is that old? Oh, wait, not Black Tail. Here we go. Uh, I think it was. Was it Dustin who was saying? Or uh, our Iceman Dan was saying that uh, they always got the broken butterfly and never bought it. But. Uh, Or maybe Swedish X. Anyway, here is the soundbite that I was talking about. I see you have an eye for things. Guns not just about shooting. It's about reloading. You'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I love it. I see you have an eye for things. Guns not just about shooting. It's about reloading. You'll know what I'm talking about. I like how he just... He just... Just... Uh foreshadows exactly what kind of situation you're going to be in when you run out of bullets in combat and uh, just kind of like nudges you in the elbow, uh, you know, elbows you in the, the ribs and uh, it's like, yeah, you'll figure it out. Oh yeah, clearly he bought this from Ocelot. That's uh, um, no engraving, but uh, you know who it came from. Is that all? Hmm. Mine thrower. Not only will you need cash, but you'll need guts to buy that weapon. Yes. Guts indeed. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, and I guess I'll keep with my shotgun. What are you buying? Until I get the striker. What are you selling? Is that all, stranger? <laughs> Thank you. Is that all, stranger? <laughs> Thank you. Is that all? <laughs> Thank you. Is that all? <laughs> Thank you. Is that all? <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> what are you buying? As I was playing this, uh, playing through the regular game on the first go round, uh, I had somebody. Uh, in the room who does not play video games and going through you know those menu items where you're just like cutting off the sound bite and then restarting it uh, going through just doing like the regular maintenance stuff uh, drove him kind of crazy and I became aware of exactly how much I start filtering stuff like that out having played video games for so long that uh, it, it no longer matters to me but for somebody who's used to language being spoken uh, in any kind of organic form. It comes off as quite weird and possibly abrasive. What are you buying? So let's invest. Is that all? That. <laughs> is that all? <old>? That. <laughs> what are you What buying? does our mind thrower want? Capacity? Yes. Is that all? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, the gun looks so weird. Come back anytime. <laughs> I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. Alright, um... So I guess I'm not buying a rifle, so I'll just sell you all this ammo that I have. What are you selling? Is that all? <laughs> Thank you. And uh, also the TNT stuff. Is that all? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah. That makes sense. Let's take a look at this. Custom mines that attach to objects and detonate after a period of time. <laughs> Looks like it's got two laser sights? Huh. 
How strange. So I, I guess you put your arm through that sheath and it braces up against your uh, your bicep or your, your triceps like that. How weird. I wonder what weapon this is based off of. I always thought it was, like, in my mind, because sometimes you encounter him and he's got the glowy Las Plagas eyes, and then other times he doesn't. Uh, I always figured that there was, like, a little cadre of them, and uh, they all, you know, kind of seven brothers kind of thing. Uh, just sort of sounded the same, acted the same, had the same, uh, same accents and inflections. <laughs> yeah. No, he actually thinks Leon's name is Stranger. It's a family name where he comes from. Alright, before I go into this next set piece, I'm going to take a quick break. I'm going to check the time and refresh my water. So, just one second, I'll be right back.
Amanda is um, <clears throat> hanging out. That's what I'm looking for. Under the bed, so I will respect the distance he has claimed for himself and uh, harass him later. <laughs> Leon just trying to correct him constantly. Always just wants the respect of being called his name. I guess maybe that's one of the reasons why Ashley shouts it so often, right? It's not really a panic thing. It's just to, to give him a little bit of moral support that the, uh, that the merchant isn't. <laughs> All of them are war criminals. Well, that's something I said when we got to the versus Roach minigame in uh, Gun Survivor 2, <clears throat> where you're, you're in these various buildings and you're using your arsenal of, of, of semi-automatic weapons and shotguns, etc., to just blast roaches off the walls. And you have to figure there is a very limited, uh, you know, outside of like biohazard outbreaks, probably fairly limited opportunities in civilian life to, uh, to take advantage of the skills needed to survive consecutive biohazard outbreaks. And so maybe, I mean, you've got, you know, uh, hardcore, hands-on exterminator and war criminal. I mean, it's not even a spectrum, it's just kind of either or. Those are your options. Oh yeah, yeah, no, I love the merchant. Uh, in fact, I, I kind of kind of wish there were something where he were, uh, you know, they, they invested in him as a character, the adventures of merchant. Um, yeah, I don't know. I do hear they're bringing back a specific like like a a merchant character, like uh, that that concept in RE8, and I'm very excited by that because he appears to be bound to specific spots, like this guy is, except he's like popping out of closets and stuff like that, which uh, which I really like. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, they live in a strangely troubled world. Um, yeah. After, uh, so what I think we're going to do is I'm going to go through the next set piece or two here. And then after that, we're going to take a quick break. And then I'm going to fire up Cave of the Word Wizard. I am the Word Wizard. Welcome to my cave, is what he says to let you know exactly what you're in for. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a good uh, Commodore 64 edutainment game that I loved when I was a boy and that I'm going to share with you <laughs> for all five people who might be interested in. But it will probably be the only live record of it being played on Twitch. And uh, I am fine owning that. Yes, Viper, it takes, uh, takes advantage of the SID voice synth technology that oh, right, uh, famously was used by... Uh, you know, impossible mission of another visitor. Stay a while. Stay forever. As I believe it was Elvind Atombender was his name. Anyway, uh, so yeah, you get to hear that same voice uh, saying, Spell deceitful. Almost, but not quite. Uh, Mendez was challenging. I died, I think, twice. And, uh, yeah, but I made it through, and now we are, now I, Leon is traveling lighter than I had thought he would be at this point. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're doing okay. Finally got the mine launcher, though, which is, which is what I'm excited about. Yeah, I tried doing that, um, but uh, this is this is professional, Viper. Um, uh, I tried throwing a flashbang and then throwing a flame, a fire grenade on him, but I wound up throwing it short by like ten feet, something ridiculously off. Uh, yes, yeah, no, I can, I see the, I can see the Dark Souls comparison. I really like how Ashley. Puddles up uh, defensively there whenever you pull out the gun. Modern 
Wait. Go ahead, lo. Go ahead, lo. Go ahead. Go ahead, lo. Go ahead, lo. We're breaking out the suplexes. Just like watching them spurt blood from it. I mean, it, it's like, I think it's supposed to be coming from their mouth. Yeah, but it looks like it's like coming from their neck grotesquely, which is somehow an even worse injury um, to imagine them sustaining. Is there, I think there's a... I kind of want to say there's a jewel up here, but uh, I think I'm wrong. Follow me. Uh, yes. I mean, you're not wrong. I don't know, man, but I am here for it. Safe. Hmm. I do kind of wish I had something with a scope on it. You know what? This leads to creative solutions. Wait. Yeah, no, um, I myself, uh, I respect the kayfabe and, uh, and, and, and like pro wrestling, but not being able to devote the time necessary to follow it, uh, even though I've devoted my time to something equally convoluted and, uh, and involved as the emotional drama of Metal Gear Solid, uh, find myself satisfied adoring the over-the-top violence of, uh, of pro wrestling moves and that sort of stylized combat for its own merits, rather than being into a specific series of wrestlers. <laughs> yeah, wrestling is like wrestling. Wrestling. Wrestling has a lore to it, and uh, and I respect that. Kenny Omega? Really? Well, Ashley, you've, you've cried wolf like twice. You are not being abducted, abducted right now. You are not being abducted right now. Oh, I bet she was reacting to somebody on the other side of the wall. The proximity yell. Because I hear him coming down the stairs.
Yeah, there's a, a kind of visceral primal joy that comes with the uh, with the suplex, the power bomb, you know, uh, etc. That is, uh, it's on the same spectrum as uh, as laughing hysterically when somebody falls down. Uh, it's 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 kind of in the same neighborhood. <clears throat> into that. Thank you. Gotta wonder if this guy, like, has been waiting for the day when this particular helmet would pay off. Finally, Leon Kennedy shows up to validate his life choice. Oh yeah, Suda absolutely understands pro wrestling and what is uh, the right slices of it to celebrate and to share with people who themselves are not in on the uh, the drama that is an ongoing pro wrestling saga. Oh hey. him. Yeah. All right. Follow me. I found myself looking up uh, videos of, um, of, uh, clotheslines and flying clotheslines and uh, it's got a lot of appreciation for it. Also some uh, some how-to videos on uh, where to catch your opponent because you know it's supposed to kind of look like a thing on the neck but it's actually a thing on the upper chest. Um, it's kind of neat. Dude, just waiting on the other side. <laughs> Welcome. What are you buying? Yeah, one of my um, one of my uncles was a former local pro wrestler um, at uh, in the local local circuit in the the southeast, and uh, he uh, was always a hit with the kids because he could because uh, I mean. He could show you all the scars and explain to our parents' dismay exactly how to uh, create an injury that will not show up later on the face. <laughs> so you got a scar horizontally, because that way it just looks like you're aging, not like you've been in a bunch of fights. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. What are you buying? So I think. There we go. Come back anytime. Yeah. 
Leon, where's your current location? People who work in spectacle are, 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 are a lot of fun. But it looks like it was a bad move. Meaning? Well, it appears that this castle's also connected with the Los Illuminados. They must not get many visitors here, because they're giving me one hell of a welcome. Sounds bad. I have an idea, Leon. I need you to... What? Repeat, Hunnigan. Great. Just my luck. Yeah, yeah, he was. And, uh... He uh, was a professional. <clears throat> he was a professional heel. His gig was to uh, show up, be menacing, be unlikable, rile up the crowd, and uh, lose by varying margins. So you got to figure. I mean, a guy who's a guy whose gig is that uh, has a certain level of humility about him and a, a deprecating... I mean, you have to be have like a self-deprecating sense of humor, uh, I think, if that's kind of like what your main thing is going to be, and he really did. Gun Dark Souls, extremely serious and probably deadly. Yeah, that's one of the things I liked about Grounded difficulty on uh, on The Last of Us. Um, just like every gunshot had its appropriate weight, uh, not just for uh, not just for you, but also for the enemies. Oh god, that laugh. Oh, come on! I'm about to shoot a dude. It's like, jeez. Just swiped at Ashley with a mace. Bad hostage taker. This is not how you do that. Even I know that. Okay. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah. still right behind me. Oh, man. Uh, I really don't want to use this. Not having any healing items now. No! Ashley, move.
Oh, thank God. Very generous of them on those healing items right now, especially. Yeah, uh, there are... I think there is some overlap in the, uh, the sound effects between those two types of enemies. Oh, excellent. This is absolutely what I need. Right after a tidy attaché case. Wild. I thought that guy always had uh, an advanced Las Plagas in him, but I guess not. Yeah, I guess the thing that uh, surprised me is that uh, I figured that the variable difficulty would not be an effect on Pro. Um, I don't know what the numbers look like behind Wait. the scenes, but my impression was that Pro was like... Uh, like hard mode in God Hand, where you've got the dynamic difficulty. Um, uh, you've got the dynamic difficulty, but on hard difficulty, it's just locked Follow to me. max. Um, so there would be like less wiggle room for variation on professional. But uh, I don't know. I don't know what the numbers game there is. Lewis, I've got something for you guys. Uh, what? Oh, shit. I must have dropped it when I was running away from them. Dropped what? A drug that'll stop your convulsions. Look, I know you're carriers. You've been coughing up blood, right? <clears throat> yeah. And you? Yes. Damn it. The eggs have hatched. We don't have much That's time. like the worst thing to about? hear. I have to go back and get regarding it. Regarding anything yeah, regarding your personal health. You stay here with Leon. He's better with the ladies. I'm sure. Why are you it makes me feel better. Interesting. Okay, so yeah, so maybe the uh responsiveness to your needs thing is there. I wonder if it's going to uh wait. Uh how it's gonna handle that with a mine thrower. Fun. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's good stuff.
Uh, the stock should be... What? It got unequipped again. Uh, no, thank you. Uh, the stock had been equipped. I'm not sure how it got unequipped. But thank you for calling that out. I did not notice. Wait. Thanks, Space Hamlet. It's always good to see you out, man. Uh, yeah, if you uh, and if you come back in the next uh, probably like 45 minutes, I'll probably be Finally. doing the tail end of uh, of Cave of the Word Wizard. So if you want to show up for that, that'll be fun. So anyway, but if you don't, I hope you have a great night, and I'll talk to you soon. didn't survive good. Oh god, don't Don't get caught reloading. Uh okay. It's horrifying how like the head is just like shoved off like a hood for that particular kind of Las Plagas. To admit I have been one of those people on occasion. The spider is pretty gruesome though. That is the key that I'm going to end the game with, uh, within my pocket. The eighth castellan of this magnificent architecture. I have been honored with the prodigious power from the great Lord Sadler. I've been expecting you, my brethren. No thanks, bro. My, my. We've got a feisty one. If you care for your own well-being, I suggest you surrender yourself and simply become our hostage. I think or Mr. this, Star, uh, you can give the us castle a is a, penny, a place where Resident Evil you 4 kind die. of leans into two, two very distinct characteristics. One is the high gothicism Never. of, uh... Got that right. We'll find a cure. Like, I don't think a Resident Evil has had an environment quite this grandiosely gothic, um in any of the prior installments. I mean, it's got like the, you know, the, the Victorian mansion and stuff like that, but this is on a whole other level. So it leans into that at, at that aspect of the atmosphere. At the same time, it also leans even more heavily into the dumb jokiness of it, where uh, 
RPD was pretty gothic. Yeah, but this is like, this is like a whole nother level, I think. So it feels like it to me. Uh, just, it's it's got that sort of like high European, uh, forgotten, uh, sort of um, degenerate wealth feel to it that that feels kind of unique to the series to date for me in this installment uh but then it's also got like i mean just basically super leaning into the dumb jokes like the short jokes of uh you know uh salazar saying uh you know don't mistake me for one of those diminutive ganados and the like um and uh yeah uh, and your right hand comes off and and all that business so yeah it's uh there is a change in tone that happens from the village to this, and uh, don't really know what to make of it entirely, but just kind of observe that it's there. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, so that'll do it for Resident Evil 4 for tonight. Um, gonna pick this back up with part 3 on Tuesday next week. Uh, but yeah, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna cut the stream, uh, get things set up for the second part, and we'll be back for, uh, for a shot at Cave of the Word Wizard. So for anybody who wants to see something that is <laughs> that's very old, um, stick around. It's, uh, it's kinda neat. <laughs>